what time it is, time to talk about my top 10 worst movies of 2020. Lucky enough, I came in all prepared. How is this bottle empty? Of course these 10 movies that I'm talking about on my top 10 worst list are movies that I felt disgusted by, movies that I just don't want to watch again, movies that made 2021 the worst years of years and also movies. Holy shit, like you know what I'm going to do to these 10 movies seriously on my top 10 worst list? I'm going to take it to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, take it to the geese room, the golden geese room, and throw them all in the garbage chute and making sure they are sizzled like a sausage. Hopefully the furnace is on, not broken. I want these movies to burn. That's how much I hate every single movie that's on my worst list. So, before we start off talking about the final video for 2020, it's time to talk about some honorable mentions, or in case you guessed it, say with me guys, DISHONORABLE MENTIONS! That's right, DISHONORABLE MENTIONS. Brahms The Boy 2. A sequel that we basically don't really need, but also, it's a sequel that has nothing to do with the first movie, that is by the same director. Doesn't make any sense. Downhill. This is trying to be like a comedy drama disaster movie, and literally felt more like a family couple's therapy, drama, piece of shit, and Will Ferrell and Julia Rich Travis really miscast it in this movie. Like a Boss, annoying comedy with Tiffany Haddish once again. Really? Tiffany Haddish? Now I have to start hating you too? Bloodshot, I'm definitely counting this movie as the biggest guilty pleasure of 2020. Vin Diesel, stick with the Fast and Furious movies, will you? Project Power, a superhero movie that could be freaking awesome. The concept of this movie was awesome, but literally this movie turns out so misleading and wastes so many opportunities whatsoever. The Witches, Robert Zemeckis. What has happened to you? From Back to the Future to this? Now I'm worried about the new Pinocchio movie. Spell, a movie that tries to be misery with hoodoo culture, and this movie kind of disrespects the culture for the better. Last, The New Mutants. Definitely one of my most disappointing movies of the year with so many reshoots proves to us that Fox and Marvel should never work together on comic book movies again. So yeah, these movies aren't as worse as those 10 movies on my list, but these movies are still horrible and horrendous. And there are some movies in 2020 that I have not seen for my worst list, including Monster Hunter, that's coming out on New Year's Day, so I'm going to count that as a 2021 movie. So guys, no further ado, let's start talking about these shit movies. These are my top 10 worst pieces of shit that I have seen in 2020. Starting off with number 10. 10. So we're gonna start off my number 10 with Artemis Fowl. This is definitely the biggest Disney disaster that I have seen probably ever. Artemis Fowl has a pretty unique concept. It actually has a cool concept, especially from the books. But this movie definitely disrespects the books for the better. Literally kind of run off what happened. You're such a good director and you direct this pile of shit with terrible visual effects. Terrible action actually. The acting in this movie was just all around boring. The main kid in the film was so wooden. Josh Gad, what the hell is this character in the film? And Judy Dench is in this movie. Two shitty movies in a row, Captain Artemis Fowl. Who was your agent? She better get fired. Everything about Artemis Fowl sucks. But there are movies that are even worse than this movie, and that's why I'm putting this movie on my number 10. Let's move on. <laughs> now, like I said before, horror movies have been terrible in 2020. You want to hear an example of one of those shitty horror films? One of those is The Grudge. Holy shit, The Grudge was boring. It's one of the most boring, unique horror films that I have seen all year. From a franchise that's very popular, and I was honestly pretty pumped for the movie because Sam Raimi was producing this film. And most of his produced projects have been very, very good. But definitely this is the biggest mistake for him because the direction of this movie sucks. It's awful. It's boring. Jump scares are even not that scary. What a disrespectful horror film that I wish it could have been so much better than it actually is. Now coming to my number 8 proves to us that Disney live action films should really stop. That movie is Mulan. Honestly, this movie really sucked. Honestly. And this movie is very controversial. Some people like this film, some people hate it. I want those people that, of course, hated Mulan. This movie literally disrespects the animated film to the better. And I know this movie is based on the culture as well, so this movie is kind of trying to be the movie that's in that culture. But honestly, this movie just took itself way too seriously than it actually is. 
the main character of Mulan was so badly written in this movie. She turns out to be already a badass, and she's getting trained. Doesn't make any sense. The original Mulan, at least she's an outsider that wants to be someone else, and seeing her being trained to be this badass. We root for her then. We don't root for her in this movie. This movie was honestly bland. It was taking itself way too seriously. It was boring. Not even the action, in my opinion, saved this movie. Seriously, Disney, I'm glad you're doing original films again, but these live action films seriously have to stop. Seven. Talking about another horror film that really misses so many opportunities that it actually is, I'm talking about Antebellum. Honestly, this movie, what what is this movie? Do you guys remember Antebellum? I don't think I remember, and I'm glad I put it on my worst list because of that. This movie was literally trying to be some type of thriller that's original and different, and it tries to make it that way, but this movie turns out to be extremely racist. It's trying to be one of those Black Lives Matter type movie, and literally it just becomes more racist than it actually is. The story of this movie doesn't make any sense, and the twist in this movie, what the heck is this twist? Like, wh where did this come from? Everything about this movie was just a huge, utter mess. Six. Now, Six can be controversial as well. Some people could like this movie, some people hate it. I'm one of those fans of this cartoon as a kid, and this movie really disrespected the cartoon that I grew up with, and that movie is Scoob. I'm not even going to do the Scooby-Doo voice for this pick, because this movie, honestly, makes Scooby-Doo 2 and the first Scooby-Doo at least a better movie. You know why? Because we see the team mostly all together in that movie, and it felt like a Scooby-Doo movie. This movie seriously did not feel like a Scooby-Doo movie. It felt like a comic book film. And you don't even see the mystery and gang together all that much in the film, which I think is the most important part of the cartoon. This movie is trying to be more of the Mighty Eagle movie than a Scooby-Doo movie. Why? Seriously, why? This is definitely the worst film that Warner Animation Group has ever done. This movie really disrespected the cartoon for the better. Alright guys, up to my top five. These movies I just hated in 2020. These movies I just want to burn them to death. My number five is definitely a movie that made me think Robert Downey Jr. You left Iron Man for this and that is Doolittle. Oh my god, why Robert Downey Jr.? You left Iron Man for this? Seriously? Everything about Doolittle is one of the most boring family films that I have ever seen. The visual effects of these animals look awful. Literally, this is a movie about a guy that speaks to animals. It's interesting enough, but this movie just makes it so boring and so bland and generic. The accent that Robert Downey Jr. does in this film is so horrendous. Literally. That's the best accent you can come up with for Dr. Doolittle? Seriously, this movie is just a pain in the ass. And honestly, I wish every single animal and Dr. Doolittle in this movie just burned to death and it would have been a much better movie than what this movie is trying to present. Now, my number four definitely is another shitty horror film that came out this year, but it turns it into the most hysterical horror movie that I've seen in 2020, and that is Fantasy Island. Everyone's going to put this movie on their list, like, don't try to deny it, because Fantasy Island is the most iconic shit movie that came out in 2020. The director of Truthful Dare returns, and even Lucy Hale returns, to bring an unexpected sequel to Truthful Dare in the most stupid way possible. Literally, this felt like an unexpected sequel to Truthful Dare, because it has the exact same problems that it had with Truthful Dare. This movie really disrespects the show in general. Michael Pena is so miscast in this movie, like, literally, he plays... The guy from the original show, seriously, I'm just, I'm just pissed at everything Fantasy Island brings us. This movie sucks, this movie's boring, this movie's just too hysterical, it tries to take itself way too seriously, and it didn't at all. Moving on, we're almost there, guys. Man, I thought the Fifty Shades era is over, seriously. We've gone through Fifty Shades movies, and now we got another new franchise. Seriously, after we collided, and I even researched of how many books this series has, and there are four of them, including a prequel called Before. <laughs> After We Collide, it provides us one of the worst romance movies that I have ever seen, possibly ever. The chemistry between Hardin and Tessa is worse than I've seen since Anastasia Steele and Christian Grey. The acting in this movie was just even worse than it was in the first one. This movie just brings us worse elements 
from the first movie and makes it more worse in this pile of shit. I'll give this movie credit. There was one scene that I did laugh hysterically because of how bad the movie was. I did enjoy myself with one scene, but that is it. The rest of this movie, I couldn't stand. I was so uncomfortable with this movie, but there are other movies on this list that I'm much more uncomfortable with than this movie. Let's talk about those pieces of shit. <laughs> Number two is definitely one of the most uncomfortable theater experiences that I've ever had in my life, and turns out to be one of the worst horror films that I have seen in 2020. That movie is The Empty Man. This movie is just so empty. That's this movie. It's empty. It's literally empty. Now, what I said about the rain mixed with the Bye Bye Man, I'm gonna change that. This is mixed with the Snowman and the Bye Bye Man. Two really terrible movies that really mislead itself. The Bye Bye Man is basically all those together and turns out to be one of the worst, most boring horror films. I wouldn't even consider it a horror film. I consider this more as a crime investigation movie that's even more boring than it actually is. The main character was so unlikable in this movie. The scares in this movie, I wouldn't even call them scares. I just call them like, oh, a scare exposition that was seen in so many movies before. And I sat through an empty theater. So I literally was ranging out angry throughout this entire movie. And it was actually a lot of fun to do that. That's how shit The Empty Man is. Guys, Hopefully you guys don't remember the Empty Man, and I don't think anyone does, because this movie literally has one trailer, one poster. Empty Man sucks, but there is one movie, of 2020, that I can't freaking stand. And again, how is this freaking empty? Because I freaking need this! <sighs> Number one. I think you guys know what it is, honestly. You guys can just guess that in 5 seconds. I'll let you guess. If you guys guess cuties... <laughs> you are absolutely correct! Everything about cuties represents what I hate about these pieces of shit of 2020. This is a movie that honestly is one of the most uncomfortable experiences that I have had in 2020. And I watched this movie on probably the worst day that I could possibly imagine. Literally, this director, I don't know what the hell she is doing, honestly, with this movie. This movie is trying to be an adult movie about 13 year old kids twerking, being women basically, being older women than they actually are, and they twerk, they show their asses a lot, and this movie was meant for like adults. Are you trying to make us perverts right now? This movie is so disrespectful for these girls. Honestly, they if girls, little girls watch this film, they're going to turn out like them, and that is terrible. Literally, this movie brings up the worst message that I have seen in a film. Cuties is definitely a film that I had to keep pausing and playing and trying to calm myself down. But it's so hard to do that because Cuties, everything about Cuties is just disrespectful, terrible, Boring as shit, horribly acted. Honestly, this movie's not even hysterical, not even a guilty pleasure. I would never, ever, ever, ever watch Cuties again. Not even once. Hopefully Netflix learned their lesson to not put these shitty movies on Netflix. Honestly, Cuties, everything about Cuties is just disrespectful. It's horrible. It's terrible. One of the worst movies of 2020. Go away, Cuties. I don't want to see you again. Ha! <sighs> Guys! We are done! These are my top 10 worst movies of 2020. And this is the final video for 2020. I can't wait for 2021. It's going to be probably one of the most crowded years of movies. So of course the next video I'm going to talk about my most anticipated movies for 2021. And in New Year's, I'm going to do an updated Blu-ray collection video. I got so many more Blu-rays ever since I do this every year. So look forward to those two videos. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below what are your top 10 worst movies of 2020 or your best. Let me know. Make sure you guys follow me on Facebook, Stardust, Instagram, Twitter. Keep contacting me and make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and notify for my latest videos. And have a nice day.